FedEx just dropped this package off, and I think I know exactly what it is. Today, we're going to unbox, take a look at the Anycubic Photon Mono X 3D Resin Printer. Let's take a look. Up. They sent the whole machine without the bolt for the build plate, and sure enough, it was down inside there. So don't throw anything away until you got all your parts. If we take a look at some of the specifications on this 3D printer, it has a 4K mono screen. It prints at 60 millimeters an hour. It has a build volume of 192 by 120 by 245. Leveling the print bed was straightforward. We simply added the build plate, loosened up four bolts. Flattened out the build plate, tightened it down. Then hit the Z equals zero button. First thing I'd like to point out is the original Photon has this magnetic door that opens and closes. It's hinged at the top, easy to do with one hand. This does not. It is literally just a square plexiglass lid. And it's, um, you know, it's under the assumption that you have the space to put this down in a clean surface, flat surface somewhere. And I have robots on every single flat surface in this shop. I just don't have the space for something like this all the time unless I really think about it beforehand. So that's a, a little pain in the butt. Uh, it's a personal preference. Um, also, if you have gloves on that have IPA or some resin on it and you have to grab the sides of this, it's not even like a, a handle to be able to lift. Um, so I'm gonna be doing this, which means I'm probably gonna do some damage um, as the IPA dries. It's gonna probably cause this surface to crack a little bit. It's time to fire up the printer and start doing some test prints. I started with their Anycubic Cube, followed by some scanned data from a museum. All the prints were done with Monocure Clear Rapid Resin. Before I give you my final thoughts on this machine, I just wanted to say that I purchased this machine with my own money and all these opinions are my own. Let's talk about my favorite things about this printer and then we'll talk about my not so favorite things about this printer. Probably my most favorite thing on this printer is the 4K mono screen. It prints two to three times faster than a standard color LCD screen. The screen is supposed to last 2000 hours compared to a regular standard LCD screen, which is supposed to last 400 hours and is considered a consumable. One of the other things I really liked about this machine was the double linear rails that they have on the Z-axis. It virtually eliminates all Z-wobble. Talk about a few things that bother me. These aren't really necessarily deal breakers. They're just little nitpicky things. As I stated earlier in the video, the lid isn't a problem right now, but I think down the road it's going to be. I think once you start handling it, it's really gonna end up looking like this. This is an earlier printer that I bought, maybe 2014 and it didn't have a handle on it. And as you can see from touching it over and over again with IPA and resin on my hands, it really cracked quite a bit. 
And in fact, after I finished just two prints on the mono, I ended up finding this little spot already on the front. You can see the crackling start right there. My second issue isn't really a big deal so much as an annoyance, but the USB drive that came with it was not formatted properly. It was formatted as EXFAT and not FAT32. So as soon as I had the machine assembled and I was getting ready to do my test print, I couldn't find the test print on the USB drive because it would not show up. So I had to take everything off of the USB drive, reformat it to FAT32, put everything back on again, stick it in the machine, and then it could find it and print it no problem. The next issue I had was a little bit of an annoyance as well, and it was the um, app that you can download. Now the app is supposed to allow you to monitor how much time is left on a print, and you um, have to go through um, quite a few hoops to get it to work. First thing you have to do is you have to create a Wi-Fi text document that basically lists your router's ID, your password, and then you have a settings that you have to put one or zero, meaning whether you have a password or you don't have a password. The syntax is very important. You have to make sure that you do exactly what it says, which it doesn't say much in the documents, but you have to be very careful with the syntax. If you miss out on a comma or a space, then it won't work. I did it three times before I finally got it to work properly. Next, you take the TXT document, add it to the USB drive, put the USB drive into the machine, then go to print, then find the Wi-Fi TXT, and then hit print, and that will install all that information onto the machine, and reboot it, and eventually within three to five minutes, it, it took me one time almost five minutes before the IP address shows up. Write down the IP address, open the app, add a device, find the Mono X, and then put the IP address in and save. Let's talk about the software slicer that comes with the printer. It's called AnyCubic Workshop. It's in release candidate, so it's not really a final, and it's got a lot of work that needs to be done. I had a lot of issues with auto supports not being generated in the right spots, and even adding supports I had issues with. And then even sometimes when I rotate a model, the model will just disappear and never reappeared again. I normally use Shiyu Box as a slicer, but they don't have a profile for any of the new AnyCubic printers that are out right now. So until that happens, I, I made a little bit of a workaround. I open up Shiyu Box, and then I take a Photon S profile and change the bed size to match the Mono X. This gives me the correct size. Then I can import my models, hollow the models out, create all my supports, and then export them out as an STL. So then I open up AnyCubic Workshop, import the STLs, and then slice them and save them out to the USB drive so that I can print them. And so far it works great. I highly recommend this printer if you're looking at getting into resin 3D printing or if you have a smaller machine and you're looking to go to a medium machine, this is perfect for that. The 4K mono screen is so fast and the resolution is so good, that's worth the $649 price tag alone. That's it for this review. See you next time.